joining us virtually or in person, we are so excited that you are worshiping with us today. Victory Nation, please join our pastor each Monday at 6 a.m. for the Victory Corporate Prayer via our Facebook members only page. Also, join us on Monday for Manor on Monday via our Facebook members only page where our pastors will share a word or thought for us to meditate on as we pause and pray. And then during the week, we pause and pray individually at noon. Everyone, please join us for Bible study every Thursday at 7 p.m. via Facebook Live. Victory Nation, we are continuing to collect backpacks and school supplies to distribute to our youth as they return to school. A collection box will be at the front entrance throughout the month of July. If you'd like to give a monetary donation, you can send by cash app, mail, or drop in the offering box at the front entrance. Please indicate that it is for school supplies. Everyone, please come out this Saturday, July 24th at 1 p.m. HOD will have a community ice cream social in the Mayfield subdivision. HOD will sponsor Micah's ice cream truck to provide the ice cream. Come out and join in the fellowship. Everyone, mark your calendars. HOD's Back to School Block Party will be Sunday, August 1st. We will have a gaming truck, laser tag truck, some good food, and many other fun activities. In addition, we will be giving out backpacks and school supplies. So come out and join in the fun. Victory Nation, if you are interested in joining in ministry, please email admin at hodfbird.org. Victory Nation, invite someone to church with you. They can share virtually or attend our weekly in-person services. We will continue practicing social distancing, wearing masks, and checking temperatures to ensure everyone's safety while we worship. Be sure to keep up with upcoming events, our latest messages, sermons, and much more by visiting HOV's social media platform. You can follow us on Twitter at HOVFXBird. Subscribe to the House of Victory YouTube channel. Follow House of Victory Fredericksburg on Instagram. Like us on our Facebook page at House of Victory Fredericksburg. And visit our website at houseofvictoryfbird.org. Please continue to join us for worship service virtually or in person every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. May God bless you and continue to walk in victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise in the building. Hallelujah, wherever you may be, hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, we praise God because we choose today to give God praise, amen. We choose today to worship Him, amen. We choose today to say thank you, Lord, for just being so good to me. Give God some praise in the building. Oh, God.
Come on, let's give God our praise in this place. God is so good, and he's worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Listen, we greet you in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus our Christ. We're so grateful that God extended mercy our way and allowed us to be in the land of the living one more time. How many people are excited to be in God's house one more time? I'm so grateful to see all of you. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. And we're grateful for his faithfulness towards us. Come on, let's prepare our hearts to pray. God, we're grateful for yet another day's journey. And we thank you and we honor you for being our God and allowing us to be your people. Father, we love you. We adore you. We honor you in such a great way. Father, we thank you for allowing us to have a peaceful night's rest, to rise with strength, to rise with power, to rise with victory. God, we ask that to clear our minds and our hearts from any and everything that would hinder our praise and our worship. Because all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise belongs to you. We ask now that you would fill this space with the evidence of your glory. We ask that you would move even across the airway. Bless those who are worshiping with us via stream. God, we pray that you would just release the floodgates even now of your presence and even your power. I saturate this place, this house, this atmosphere with your power, your presence, with your healing. Do God what only you can do. God, you're so worthy. And you deserve all the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. So we give you all of the glory all of the honor and all of the praise. Save souls today. Set captives free today. God, I pray that you would heal relationships today. I pray that you would bring that wayward child back today. God, I pray that you would give us all that we stand in need of. That we may go forward in your perfect will. God, move in this place like never before. Promise to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and worship Him. Come on, praise Him even in this place. Hallelujah. Come on and bless us.
Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. Come on, do me a favor. Why don't you stand on your feet and point at somebody around you? Say, I'm not being rude. I just want to say good morning to you. I see you over there, and I'm grateful for your presence here today. So glad to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. God bless you, heaven and heaven. Bless you, Pastor. So good to see you. And the beautiful family, so good to see you. Sister Bonnie's in the house, God bless you. So good to see you, Sister Slaughter back there. We thank God for our sisters here sharing with us. We thank God for you. Christian, what's going on, sir? So glad to see you and the nephews in the building. I am so grateful that God is in the blessing business and he's keeping us yet alive. Anybody excited about the name and the presence and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. So grateful. Listen, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Listen, I am so grateful to God for us. Yet a blessed weekend. Listen, oh, Sister Addie, you have your great nephew. Did I get it correct? Come on, can we give them a hand of praise? I think they're all the way from Georgia, from Florida, California. Wow, the further, all right. Hey, Amen. Welcome. We thank God for you. Listen, we had a wonderful weekend with our youth. I think we wore most of them out. They wore me out. I know that's right. But we had a wonderful time. You have a good time. Come on, let's come on up here with me. I want you. I want you to know, man, we ate ice cream yesterday, and we had a beautiful time. Did we have a beautiful time yesterday? Yes. What was your favorite flavor? Vanilla. Vanilla. <laughs> Listen, we had, we had some young people that got old spirits. They was eating butter pecan. You know, you got to be at least in your 40s to eat butter pecan. They were, they were going for it, though. Did you have a good time yesterday? Who ate the most ice cream? Did you say co-pastor? I heard you. You know she's watching, right? Who ate the most ice cream yesterday? I don't know. You don't know? You were, you were locked in with your stuff. Listen, we give our babies a hand. We enjoyed that. Thank you, baby. Listen, we enjoyed that. We had a wonderful time yesterday. It was a great fellowship. We were able to even bless um, the community. And um, I'm grateful. Uh, so I thank all of our leaders for, come on, give them a hand praise for all those who were um, responsible for coordinating and making sure everything went well. Listen, and again, we're doing it again. This Saturday we'll be in Mayfield, in the Mayfield community. We're giving out free ice cream. Y'all heard it. That's how we do it. We're giving out free ice cream to not only uh, the youth in that community, but to everyone who shows up. We're going to bless them. So spread the word. Let them know we'll be there at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Only an hour. Amen. Anything after that, you're sure. But we will be there. We have an ice cream truck um, coming, and we're going to bless the community. How many of you know it's hot enough for some good ice cream? Hallelujah. Oh, so y'all not ice cream lovers. Okay. Don't y'all show up next week trying to get two and three cones. I said, how many of you know it's hot enough for some good ice cream? There we go. All right. Yes, and so we invite you to come out and uh, fellowship with us during this um, outreach opportunity. We believe that God is up to something major, and we're just glad that he's not doing it without us. Aren't you glad that God is using us to be a blessing? That God is using us to do kingdom work and kingdom ministry. And I'm honored, I'm honored that God chose you. Look at somebody and say, God chose me. Yes, he chose me. And so I'm glad, Sister Lisa, that God keeps blessing us and using us in a mighty and magnificent way. How many of you know it could have been somebody else, but maybe that's why God keeps waking us up, because God keeps having work for us to do. Some people died maybe because they didn't understand the purpose that God had for their life. But when you know you have purpose, when you know that God is doing something in your life, you rise up, you wake up, you come up with a new buoyancy, with a new power, with a new freshness and anointing, saying, God, here I am, use me. Put a smile on somebody's face. Use me today to make a difference in this world. 
And I'm so grateful that HOV has been called for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. This is so many wonderful things are happening. I'm excited about the first Sunday of August as well. The first Sunday of August. Our service time will be uh, at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. That, that Sunday. 1 p.m. that Sunday. We'll have service from 1 to 2 o'clock. And then out in the parking lot, we're going to have um, a big celebration for back to school. We'll have supplies. We'll have food. we got game trucks. So make sure you come out. Bring them out, Christian. Bring them out, Sister Addy, if they're still in town. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. Bring them out, Ron. We're going to have a wonderful um, time in the Lord. And so make sure that you prepare. Put it on your calendars. Because if you show up here at 830, um, it may just be me and you. But that's all right. I'm going to pull you on the screen and we'll do a devotional together. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm grateful and I thank God for our guests who are sharing. Give God a hand praise for all of our wonderful guests who are sharing in person and even those who are sharing online. We thank God and we honor God for you. Listen, this is the day God has made. We're rejoicing. We're glad in it. And this is the portion of our worship experience where we give God his tithe and his offering. If you're sharing with us today, we don't require that you give, but we know that the word of God is true. If you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Listen, it's been some amazing testimonies through the faithfulness of and obedience of our believers, and I'm grateful. Listen, uh, I shared one um, on our members page this past week and, and, and God has just been honoring our faithfulness I am telling you and then I got a call uh, maybe a day or so after that testimony and somebody said they were riding down the street and the Lord told them to sow uh, a big seed into the ministry and I, you know, I'm riding down the street as well while, you know, when the person called me and I said, Pastor, you know, uh, just call just to, you know, holler, just to say hello and to let you know I was just riding down the street and the Lord, you know, spoke to me and told me to sow this seed. I said, oh my God, I'm like, what street is that? We're going to take a tour. We're going we to do a journey. We're going we gonna to get the whole church to go down that street. But I'm grateful for the faithfulness and for the commitment of those of you who love God and God has been faithful to you and you understand that it is our due diligence, it is our responsibility to honor God because God has honored us. So come on, give God a praise for his goodness towards the people of God. God is doing a magnificent work through us and we're grateful. Listen, God is blessing our, our, our members, our partners, I'm telling you, in great ways, businesses are blooming and blossoming. We have faith. Um, whatever we do, God has just blessed us. And I thank God for the favor and obedience of, of, um, of God's people here at Victory. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things. I'm excited. Uh, we're, we're celebrating even this weekend. Sister Marla's out uh, uh Recording Family Feud. Amen. I'm telling you, come on, give God a prayer. We're praying for her. We're praying that they have a safe time. Not only a safe time, but I am praying that uh, that they come out with the victory. Amen. Amen. Isn't, that what, isn't that what we said? We, we just don't fight. We fight to win, right? Amen. I wish I had somebody that was up. Man, we got to change the service times about 5 p.m. when y'all up and going. I said, we just don't fight. We fight to win. I thank you, sir. I, I wish I had another witness to say, thank you, Sister Slaw. I thank, thank you, Tifa. Thank you, Mr. Marlon. We, we don't, we don't want to just to humble, but we want to come out with the belt. Y'all hear me? We are a, a body of believers who believe that we are champions because Christ has given us the victory. So we're praying for their safety. We're praying that they walk out with victory. Listen, um, another one of our members, Brother Rashard, his uh, his uh, after shop shop basketball team is playing in a national tournament. Um, the grand prize is $1 million. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, 
Man, they, 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 their first game, they were down in that first half. But they came back in that second half and they and they brought it on home. And he, listen, he was um, the MVP of the game, if you will. He hit the game winning shot. I'm telling you that we don't, we don't play, we don't play just to play, we play to win. Look at somebody say we play to win. I'm telling you, there is a faith, but there is a grace that's on God's people, and I'm grateful that we're fortunate enough to walk in it, and I thank God for that. We believe for greater things. We believe that God honors us when we honor him. So come on, let's stand to your feet. If you're sharing with us today, we don't require it to give, but we know that the word of God is true. If you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. Shaking together and running over. You already know the different platforms you can give. If you're in person today, you can ask for an envelope, which you probably receive upon entry. And you can drop that off on the way out. Uh, we're still practicing some uh, certain protocols so we don't come around um, and, and drop it off during service. But on your way out, we ask that you uh, would drop it off at God will bless you just the same. If you want to give electronically, you can go to our HOV Cash app, um, HOV Effenberg, or you can go to Giveify, and you can give there at House of Victory, Fredericksburg. Come on, let's lift up our offering, even if it's electronic. God, we're grateful. And we thank you for looking past all of our faults and always meeting our needs. Thank you, God, that you have been such a blessing to us, that you have given seed to the soul, and for that, Father, we say thank you. God, I ask now that you would continue to bless us, continue to breathe fresh upon us, continue to enlarge our borders, our territory, for your glory's sake and your glory's sake alone. God, I pray even now that as we give to you, we give because we love you, because we honor you, because we thank you, because we appreciate you, because we know that if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. And so, God, in our obedience, we come and we thank you. We worship you with our time, with our offering. We honor you with our time, with our offering. And we pray, God, that you would not only bless us individually, but bless our bloodline. Don't only bless our bloodline, bless this ministry, this church. Don't let us just be blessed, but cause us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise team, y'all doing all right this morning. I'm so grateful. Can we give our music team and our musicians a hand? We thank you. We honor God for them. Hallelujah. So excited. Listen, I'm praying for Brother Teddy. Brother Teddy is uh, joining in virtually. We thank God. Let's thank God for what God is doing in Brother Teddy's life. We thank God for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on.
did y'all hear what I said? Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, you too. I'm talking to you. You just need the faith to do it again. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Faith to do it again. Listen, I'll try not to keep us too long, Brother Myers, but I want to talk to us just for a few moments um, about this thing called faith and how it is so pivotal in accomplishing the things that God has called us to do. Faith is significant to our purpose. The purpose is oftentimes released and obtained through our faith. And when we lose faith or when we're absent, of faith, we find ourselves depressed, out of purpose, and frustrated because we have not obtained that that we are believing God for. Amen. Most of us will not be found guilty of not trying, but most of us will be found guilty of giving up too soon. Yeah. I wish I had a witness in the building. Yeah. I won't yell at you a whole lot today because I just want to talk to you because I believe, Brother Troy, that there are many of us under the sound of my voice this morning that have simply walked away from some things because it didn't happen uh, within the timeline that you set for yourself. Many of us have walked away from um, jobs or careers or opportunity or home ownership or things that we've been believing God for because it didn't happen when we thought it was going to happen. It didn't happen how we thought it was going to happen. But I come this morning to tell you that you got to raise up your faith. you got to up your faith. you got to have faith to do it again. See, some of us, Lord Hammers, I feel God in this place. Some of us will be found guilty of walking away too soon from the fight. Some of us will be found guilty from getting our marbles, getting frustrated, going home and say, I tried, so uh, uh, I did what I could do. But see, that's the problem. You did what you could do, but you didn't allow God to do what God can do. And I'm here to tell you that when you allow God to be part of the equation, that when you allow God to be part of your plan, that when you invite God into what it is that you believe in God for, amazing things can happen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that business that you walked away from, that thought that you had of doing something great and leaving a legacy for your family, it's not too late. You just got to have faith to do it again. That relationship that you walked away from prematurely because it didn't look like it was going anywhere because you thought that it was over. I'm here to tell you, you just got to have faith in God to do it again. It's something about doing it again. It's something about trying. It's something about putting in a, another um, 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 level of effort and trying to be consistent and hold on to what it is that you're trusting and you're believing God for. Maybe there's somebody in our virtual space today that needs to understand that all you need to have is the faith to do it again. I'm telling you that when you get it in your spirit, when you get it in your mind, when you get it in your heart, you can accomplish great things, but you just got to have faith to do it again. No baseball player straps out and quits the team. They understand that they got to get back up in the battles box. They understand that they got to knock the dirt off of their cleats. They understand that they got to keep focusing and keep winding the bell and they got to keep swinging. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, Dominique, but I believe that there's some Somebody under the sound of my voice that needs to hear, you better keep swinging, yeah? You better keep swinging until you make contact. You better keep swinging until you get what you what it is you're believing God for. Listen, you may strike out, but that doesn't mean that the game is over. Don't you know that there's nine innings? Don't you know that you get another chance to hit the ball? Don't you know that you get another chance to get back up in the bat?
us throwing the towel too soon. And I'm just and I just rose this morning, paid to tell you that you gotta learn how to just do it again. No athlete, pay no athlete, uh, uh, spears, brothers, no athlete, Juan will just take a hit and then quit. You gotta know that there is a game, that there is a purpose, there is a process. That is not about one play. It's not about two plays. That, you know when you get on the first one. You got to get back down there. You got to put your feet in the dirt. You got to put your hand in the dirt. You got to get meaner than what you were to play before. You got to be more focused than what you were to play before. You got to do whatever it takes. You got to roll up in your sleeve and say, devil, you may have gotten me that first one, but I promise you, if you don't play that next one, you finish this game. You don't know who's been in the fight. And I already told you, I don't fight just to fight. I fight to come out on top of the that gives demonstration in his holy writ that there are opportunities and there will be um, situations right, where we just have to do it again. Amen. You can't uh, label yourself as a failure Amen. because it didn't work. Hallelujah. The first time, you, you can't allow people to stamp that on you to share it because it didn't work. The first time, God is the kind of God that always gives us another chance. Oh, have mercy. When it's part of your purpose, when it's part of your DNA, when it's part of your story, you can't quit. When God has already said the end at the beginning that you can't quit. You are destined to win. You are destined to come out on top. You are destined to put something great. And no matter what comes your way, no matter what disappointments you have, you have to learn how to get your faith to the place and to the point that you dust yourself off and get back out there. You don't believe me, it's in the Bible. Even when we look at the New Testament, we see that they were fishing all night long. And the Bible said that they came up with absolutely nothing. Sister Glasgow, they fished all night long. They were professionals at it. They fished all night long and didn't catch one fish. Oh, and have mercy. The Bible said they caught absolutely nothing. Even the worst fishermen, um, Deacon Marvin, or pull up a crab, or pull up a turtle, or pull up something, even if it ain't a fish. But the Bible said that these professionals fished all night and caught absolutely nothing until they got their faith up enough to believe what God God told them to do, when he told them to put your debt on the other side, when the cash your debt on the right side, then they began to get results, but they would have never been able to catch all that God had in store for them if they were not willing to get back out there and do it again. And I tell y'all something, we got some believers even around you, maybe somebody sitting in your section that can attest to the fact that the only reason that they're here today is because they made up their mind that they were there's some people out here right now that said, I just quit. I'm tired of getting up. I'm tired of working a job and don't see my toes. I'm tired of giving this church the best years of my life and ain't nothing happening. I'm, I'm tired of trying to find the right moment and ain't nothing happening. I, I give up. I'm tired of getting up. I, I just wanted to hear it. I got these tears on, 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 on my bed. I, sign. I, I just feel like walking away from it all. But some kind of way, they snuck in there. And they started telling you,
And this story with Abraham and Sarah that I believe can bless our lives, can help us go to um, this place where God would desire for us to go. Y'all know the story of Abraham and Sarah. We always focus on Abraham, but do you realize what Sarah must have been going through, what this sister must have been dealing with to try to be in a relationship with the man, and a man who is mighty, who has a call on his life, a man who God has promised to give a nation to, and you cannot be the one to operate in what it is that you need to operate, and you know that they had to be trying and trying and trying because they said that they couldn't do it, that nothing's happening, that they gave up, that they had lost hope. You know that they had to lose hope because they kept trying. Nobody loses hope unless you've given your all. Nobody has become that discouraged unless you have given your all, and once you've given your all, you just feel like, I've done all that I can do. There's, there's, there's no use. It's never going to live again. It's never going to work again. It's never going to come together. It's never going to bring forth. And so Sarah was dealing with all of this stuff. And the Bible says that God told Abraham that your wife Sarah is going to bring forth a son. And she happened to hear what God was saying. And she was on the other side of the tent. And she started laughing. Can I tell y'all something? God is the kind of God that can make you laugh. God is the kind of God that can tell you some stuff that'll make you just give it some time. God can tell you where he has in store for you to the place and to the point that it'll make you give the Lord have mercy. Has God ever spoke something in your spirit that just made you laugh because you're just trying to figure out, God, how the Lord you going to do that? Has God ever had you by through a neighborhood and God, you God just stop telling you some stuff and you just start laughing, God, I don't know how that's going to happen. Have you ever seen somebody and you say, where are we? And God say, yeah, that's your wife, that's your husband. And you say, oh, have mercy, I don't know how that's going to happen. Has God ever showed you a place and you just said, oh, Lord, have mercy, I, I, I don't know how this is going to God, God, make you laugh, God, but you said things that will require you to have faith. Sarah, I promise I'm going to let you go in a little while. And Sarah was going through the disappointment of trying to bring forth. So one of the things that we're going to have to learn how to deal with while we're going through, Nina, while we're doing it again, you got to learn how to deal with this scourge. Come on, I wish I had somebody in here that would be honest about it to say that sometimes it's just discouraging when you've done your best. When you've given your all, when you've done absolutely everything that was required of you, and still you have not got the result that you have hoped for. You have to learn how to deal with that discouragement. You can't just overlook it. You gotta no, because it's a reality. But what you cannot do is allow your discouragement to dominate. Did y'all hear what I said? You can't allow your discouragement to overwhelm you to the place and to the point that you that you stop, that you give up, that you quit, that you throw in the towel. You got to take your discouragement and you got to get back out there. You got to take your discouragement and you got to do it again. Listen, you may get a 99 no's, but there's, there, I'm telling you, there's, there's one yes that's waiting on you. And you have never get that one yes if you allow the discouragement of the 99 to mess you up. Listen, you don't have to worry about the relationships that didn't work. You deal with it. What could I have done better? What did I mess up? How did I mess up? What, what was this? And how did you deal with all of that? You deal with the pain and you get yourself healed, but you get back out there. If that's your hope, you get back out there. Did y'all hear what I said? Y'all, 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 like y'all never had your heart broke. Yeah, like you've never been through a bad relationship. Can I tell you something, Lord? I mean, I, I probably should say this um, on the air, but I, I, let, let me come to the back end of it. I, I wouldn't have my, my wife uh, uh, that I love and I'm, I'm, I'm praising God for if I didn't get back out there. I know what heartbreak is like. I know what discouragement is like. I know y'all gonna put the spotlight on me and act like I'm the only one that ever had your heart broken. Like I'm the only one that's ever been discouraged. But Lord have mercy. I'm telling you that if you learn how to get your faith up enough to get back out there, then God can bless your life. Listen to me. Some of y'all are mad. Right now, because you 
got that counted because he said, I'm determined that I'm not going to let somebody that didn't understand my value or appreciate what God was doing in my life determine the rest of my life. I'm going to get back out there and I'm going to let God do what God has to do. We have to learn how to deal with discouragement. That's number one. And you can't allow your discouragement to dominate. Your faith has to dominate your discouragement. And secondly, you have to hold on to hope. Did y'all hear what I said? You got to hold on to hope. Hope is a desire with anticipation to want something to happen or to be true for a hope of elevation or promotion. In other words, the thing that you are believing on, believing for, you got to hold on to that. You got to hold on to it. Listen, <laughs> I, I like to use myself because I'm, I'm easier to use and I won't get mad at me like some of y'all would get mad at me. <laughs> but even in a journey to get fit, and I ate so much ice cream yesterday with a kid. <laughs> and enjoyed it. <laughs> and wanted to go back if they hadn't closed out the thing. <laughs> but I am on a journey to reach a certain place, a certain level. But I I got to hold on to that hope yeah. and not allow my discouragement Amen. or my mistakes Amen. to mess up what it is that I'm hoping for. Amen. Sarah disqualified and disvalued herself to the place of point. Y'all know that she got her servant girl to come in and get with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he ended up having a child by the serving girl. And Sarah ended up getting upset, getting mad. And she was so frustrated because she made a mistake. She was so frustrated because she had to live with the mistake that she made. But can I suggest to you that even when you mess up, God's got grace. I wish I had a witness. And even when that God has grace, that God is the God of another chance, that God is the kind of God that doesn't write us off, that our purpose is bigger than the perfect person. Amen. Oh, I wish I had y'all. I said your purpose is bigger than the person. Amen. God knows all of our stuff. But our purpose yeah. is bigger than who we are. Right. Some of us wouldn't be operating in the capacity that we're operating in if the person was bigger than the purpose. Right. Y'all wouldn't have a preacher up here this morning by the name of Dwayne Robinson if the person was bigger than the purpose. But because the purpose on my life is bigger than who I am, Lord have mercy. That's why God gives me grace that even when I mess up, even when I fall short, even when I make a mistake, because he knows what it is that he's going to do to me. Even though Abraham and Sarah messed up, God still used them because there was a purpose attached to their life. They just had to have the faith to go back out there and do it again. Lord have mercy, I feel this thing wrong. I wanted to talk to y'all. Let me hurry up and get through this. Listen, so number one, you got to learn how to deal with your disappointment, your discouragement. Number two, you're going to have to learn how to hold on to hope. And then you're going to have to learn how to be persistent. Did y'all hear what I said? Listen, I'm telling you, I've seen, Lord have mercy, uh, what, kind of, 
We got a mixed crowd in here today. Got some young people in here. But listen, I seen the ugliest dude in high school get the prettiest girl. Because they were persistent. Lord help us. I percent. Oh y'all have a young people in high school. Come on, y'all. Y'all better not say pastor and co pastor. Y'all never seen the dude, and y'all look at and be like, how in the world he get hurt? Lord have mercy. Oh, come on, y'all better not say, I see, see God, I see you, I see you, I see the pastor and co pastor go back. Listen, I'm telling you, it's because, yeah, I got, I may as well tell you, yeah, I learned how to be persistent. Listen, I, I used to call her out. Uh, we were in seminary together. Um, I would call her. She'd be on her job, and I'd call her. Hey, uh, what did the professor say about this assignment? I got it right here in front of me. You know? what, what did the professor say? Can you give me some clarity on that? And uh, she's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, this and that. And so she said, yeah, I'm really busy. You know, she tried to brush me off. She, did, yeah, she tried to play me. And so she said, I'm really busy. I got a lot uh, going on. We, we're in the middle, you know, this big thing. This thing. I said, oh, okay, well, thank you. I just needed to get that information. Now we're about an hour and ten minutes. I was right on time. Listen, did you say that the professor said this? This that? And she's like, yeah, I'll tell you, can, can I call you back? Yeah, call me back. I'm waiting. She called back. Oh, oh okay. Now I got, I got all you know. You can call me from your work phone. I got your work phone number. That, now you can mess that. That's so hard. Listen, let me ask you this. What, what you going to be doing later on? Can you call me so we can just talk this thing over? I want to see what's going on, this and that. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll give you a call. Start talking. So, yeah, so what do you do outside of preaching? <laughs> what's your favorite restaurant? Oh, for real? Oh, yeah, okay. And I see you in class. Now, walk right, hey, how you doing? Walk right back like I ain't even burned to the death. I'm, hey, how you doing? <laughs> And she's looking like, is this joke crazy? He didn't my phone up all week. They got like, you know, me. And then before you know it, I'm sitting there, and she comes sit right down beside me. Lord, I have mercy. <laughs> and I was planning to keep on saying, doo, 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 doo. She said, I, I'm sitting there, she comes sit right down beside me. And I was so nervous, I kept looking straight ahead. And she said, you all right? I'm like, this young. <laughs> She's like, you sure? Because I was giving her my humble. See, I ain't gonna tell y'all all my stuff, young brother, but y'all see pay my seat taking no quad, quad like this on the end of this seat. Quad gonna be there with quad you persistent at. So listen, and so you gotta learn <laughs> how to be persistent. I'm sorry, we're not hiring. Okay, thank you. Call back in another few days. Hi, I was just uh you know, I heard that you all may be looking for some great talent. Um, I, I am uh, very experienced in doing X, Y, and Z, and I was just going, well, um, you know, we're hiring, but uh, it hasn't opened up yet. Okay, sure, but thank you. Well, um, who, when, when it opens up, who, who should I talk to? Um, well, call Mr. Smith. Okay, I'll call Mr. Smith. Hi, a uh, few more days. Hi, uh, this is Dwayne Robinson again. I called, I talked to you um, the other day. I want to thank you for taking my call, and I won't keep you long, but um, I called, you told me to give you a call back. You said that they would, um, you know, you guys would be hiring, they would be opening up, and you'd be talking. Is this Mr. Smith in? No, Mr. Smith's not in today. Okay, uh, do you have any idea what Mr. Smith would be in? Um, I have no idea what Mr. Smith would be in. Okay, thank you. Call again. Call again. Mr. Smith in? No, he's not there. All right, I, I, listen, I'm persistent. I'm calling. I'm gonna come up there. I'm coming up there. Hi, I met you. Never listen. I wanted to put a face with my voice. I know we talked a couple times. Listen, I'm Dwayne Robinson. Great to meet you. Here's my resume. Listen, is Mr. Smith available? Well, Mr. Smith, hey, um, hey, um, so so. This is you know. Make sure you get this. Thing. Is that Mr. Smith? Yeah, that's Mr. Smith. Hey, Mr. Smith, I don't I'm Dwayne Robinson. See, you gotta be persistent. See, y'all don't understand what I'm trying to show y'all. But I'm telling you that when you learn how to be persistent. You gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep going at it until you get the results that you can listen. Abraham and Sarah had to be persistent. I don't want to get vulgar in here, but look at somebody and say, you gotta keep doing it, Lord have mercy, until you get the results you're looking for. Oh, have mercy. See, that's gonna sound with some of y'all here. Yeah, some of y'all you know what I'm talking about. You can't expect a baby and Lord have mercy and then stop Lord have mercy. You, you gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep going. You gotta have the faith. Listen, the Bible says that before you 
didn't know it. God honored their persistency. Let me show you this. I love this, and I got to let you go. I promise. What is it? 942? Give me 950, if that. Um, and, 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 and I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to get out your way. Look at this. Abraham and Sarah were believing God for something. She didn't get it through her intellect. She didn't get it through her connections, per se. She got it through her faith. Hebrews 11, 11 reads like this. Through faith, Sarah herself, not her hand, herself, received strength to conceive. And some of us have been trying to the place and to the point where we're weak, we're depleted. We feel like we just don't have the strength to do it again. But faith will give you strength to do it again. Y'all hear what I said? I'm telling you, it's something about faith that speaks to you in your weakest time, in your weakest moment, in your darkest hour, that empowers you to go forward and do it again. The Bible says it was through faith that Sarah herself received the strength to conceive seed and delivered a child when she was past age. Even when she thought she missed the moment, faith reminded her that God is not in prison by time and especially by the time of man. That God has the final say and the timing over your situation, over your condition, over what it is that you're believing God for. That it's all based on God's timing. Even when we think we missed it, God has a way of reminding us that it was never about our timing, that it was ultimately about his timing. And God has a way of doing things in our life that makes it seem like we have missed it, that we have, um, that we're so far away from the deadline that, we, have, that, that, that we, we, we will never get what it is that we're hoping for. But God has a way of waiting a little while longer to show you that when it's done, that you know it wasn't anybody but me. That it was only God that allowed you to get it. It was only God that allowed you to bear it. It was only God that allowed you to walk in it. But you got to have faith to get back out there to do it again. And God will honor your faith if you learn how to keep doing it. God will honor what it is that you trust Him for. Do it again. Through faith, she got strength to receive and conceive the seed and was delivered a child when she was past age. You want to know why? Because she had the faith to get back out there and keep trying. You know why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised her that he was going to do it. I want to talk to you today and remind you that there are promises over your life. Whether it be financial, whether it be relational, whether it be healing, that God has placed over your life. You just got to have the faith to start walking back in what it is that God said you can have, that you're believing Him for. You got to get back on that, that path, back on that street. Don't give up. I'm telling you, you can fight to the end and you can win. You just got to have the faith to do it again.
back out of faith. Amen. Get back out there and trust. Somebody's believing God for that business, that career, that job. And it looks like the doors are closed. Looks like it's not going to happen. You just got to get back out there with faith and keep doing what it takes for God to bless your faith. I believe. There may be one or two under the sound of my voice today that have been fighting or fighting. And you're at the point, or maybe past the point where you've thrown in the towel, you've given up, you've walked away, you said, That's it. But I'm here to tell you, God, put in my spirit to tell you. Come on, 